So I want to talk about self-sabotage. You dig? I want to talk about self-sabotage today, y'all. You know what I'm saying? Uh, many times we can derail ourselves. We can have a plan. We can have a vision. We can have a goal. You know, it, we strategize and, 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 and all this. Start to put things into place, put things into motion. Get this going over here while we're starting this over here, while we got this project going over here. Right? Grand plans. Great. Beautiful. But yet, are we shooting ourselves in the foot? Are we biting off more than we can chew? Right? I remember my grandma used to say, boy, don't start what you can't finish. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Now, that's taken on many meanings over the years, right? Several different meanings as far as, you know, starting something and then you know, getting distracted or, 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 you know, giving up or, you know, all these obstacles coming your way and not starting, I mean, not finishing those things, those projects, those dreams, those goals, those aspirations. Been there, done that. But when it comes to self-examination, right? A lot of times we don't like to look inside or we like to look outside and look at all the situations and circumstances where this happened and, and this caused me to do that or, or you know, I thought this was the right thing, but then I found out self-examination. <laughs> you dig? Are we, are we shooting ourselves in the foot? Are we, you know, are we taking one step forward and then unknowingly taking four steps back? Because of the words that are coming out of our mouth or because of our actions with our own hands or because of the way we think and the way we perceive things. You know what I'm saying? A lot of times we do this to ourselves and then when we, we want to blame other people, we want to, you know, we want to look at everybody else. You know how you do like this and it's like there's one finger pointing, but yet there's four more pointing back at you and we don't like to look at ourselves. We want to look at ourselves as, hey, man, I did nothing wrong. Or, hey, I, I did the best I could with what I had. You know what I'm saying? Or with the information I had, I made the best conscious, rational decision that was going to benefit me first and then hopefully other folks. When usually it's just benefit us first. We ain't think about nobody else. Right? But bad decisions. And when things go haywire, when things go wrong, then we want to look at everything else instead of looking at us. We don't want to look at, we would, we, we would rather look at the government. It's the government's fault. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Their policies and procedures, it's not, it's not conducive to helping the, the middle class and the poor and the elderly and the homeless and all that. You know, we, we say all that, right? Or we want to blame the church. Oh, the church ain't doing enough. If the church was this and the church was that, then this, the church had, didn't cause this problem, so to speak. You know what I'm saying? It's the hearts of men in their evil ways and their greed. Or we'll look at, you know, we'll look at family. Well, so and so got and they're doing this and they're doing well and da 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 da. Why they ain't helping us? They got it. Or, you know, I'm saying we'll just look at circumstances. We'll look at friends. We'll look at situations where we live, the environment, right? We'll look at all these other things instead of looking at decisions that we have made when you can look at yourself and say it's me oh lord it's me that's standing in the need of prayer it's not them over there or it's not that group of people over there it's me right it's me that's standing in the need of prayer i mean we talk about faith over fear today you know what I'm saying? When we exercise in our faith over the fear of self-examination. Because see, when you examine yourself and you truly take some time out, you truly get in a, in a quiet place and you examine yourself, you examine your choices, you examine some of the decisions. Come on now, I'm not just talking to you because I'm speaking about me. Whenever I speak, I'm always using myself as the example. But when we make decisions that are not good decisions, they're not smart decisions, they're decisions that not just affect us, but they affect people around us. They affect people that are in our circles. They affect people that are watching us. 
our decisions. Right? We got to we got to look at ourselves and we got to do better. We got to look at ourselves and say I put myself in this situation from the decisions that I made or from the, the lack of decisions that I didn't make. I did it. And I can't blame anyone else. I can't look to anyone else to get me out of this situation that I have put me in. Nobody put a gun to our head. Nobody had a knife to our throat. Nobody had tased us. You know what I'm saying? These are decisions that we make. And then when they turn out not to be good decisions, many times we even know when we're making them that it may be risky. <laughs> it may be risque. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It, hey, it, it, it's a chance that this might not turn out well. It's a chance that I could, you know, really mess things up. But what happens? <laughs> do we stop at that point and say, wait, wait, what are you doing, dude? Pump the brakes. No, we press on and be like, it'll work out. It'll be okay. God's got my back. Now you put God in and God ain't had none of the, he told you to do none of those decisions you made, you made on your own. <laughs> you didn't consult nobody. You ain't asked your friends. You ain't asked your mama and them. You ain't asked <laughs> the Lord. You, this is something you did on your own and now you're in hot water and you, now you want to, you know, complain or you want to, you know, look at everything else and say, this is the reason why, or if this wouldn't have happened, or, well, I thought this was going, but this person didn't come through, or I was trying to be slick. I was trying to cut corners. You know, I was trying to cheat the system. And then we don't want to keep it 100 and put it on us. Even if we say, well, I, I trusted so-and-so said that they was going to do this. And I trust that they were going to do it. And then they fell through or they didn't come through with what they said. If we would have made better choices in the decisions, we wouldn't have had to rely on no one else to come through or rely on anyone else's word. And then it fell through. Again, it comes back to our decisions and the choices that we make. Now, the scripture is going to be coming out of uh, the book of Joshua, the 24th chapter and the 15th verse. You dig? But before we get into that, please like this video, share this video on all your platforms. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, you dig? And make sure you hit that bell notification so you're always notified whenever I upload content. All right? Now let's get off into this word. Joshua 24 and 15 says, and if it seemed evil to you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods of your fathers whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood, right? If you're going to serve those gods, choose to serve those gods. Or the gods of the Amorites in whose land that ye dwell. Or, you know, you know, you, you, you can choose to serve your flesh. Hey, that's not in the scripture, but, you know, that's another choice. You can choose the gods that were on the other side of the flood, or you can choose to serve the gods of the Amorites, who's the land that you dwell. But as for me, but as for me and my house, this temple, my house, right? As for me and those that dwell under my roof, my house, it says, we will serve the Lord. It's a choice, y'all. I'm speaking from personal experience, you dig? Let's exercise our free will that causes not only us to benefit, but others to benefit around us and not be a hindrance and, and a deterrent because of the choices that we make. You dig? The same free will that God gives us to make choices is the same choice that we have in our everyday lives. So when we make good choices and sound choices that are based on facts, that are based on sound reasoning, that are based on being in tune and lined up with the God of this universe or being, you know, lined up to do your own thing according to your own flesh or lined up to 
serve other gods and 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 this sort of thing, right? We have free will, but what we do with it matters. And if you choose to use your free will, knowing the truth, and yet still choose to do, you know, something that's not in line with us being in alignment with God, then you can't you can't really complain about what happens after the fact because you made that choice. Now, will God come in and cover us in certain situations? Will God come in and have mercy on us in certain situations? Will God come in and show us favor in such? Yes. But if you are making the conscious decision and choice that are the wrong decisions and choices, then you're going to have to deal with those decisions and choices. And it really shows a lack of maturity and it shows a lack of faith to go back every time and on a consistent basis, asking God to fix it. Forgiveness. Asking for God's mercy. Because I'm not exhibiting self-control because I'm not showing that I've learned and I'm matured and I've grown. And God, I don't want to keep hurting you. I don't want to keep hurting those around me. I don't want to keep uh, representing you in a false way. When we walk in disobedience to what God says and we make decisions to do what we want to do in our, and, and, and decisions that are on our own, right? He gives that an ability, but yet when we make those choices, why don't we just stand by those choices then? Why don't we stand by the results that comes from the choices that we made? No, we want to go back and ask for forgiveness and cry out and God, please show your mercy. God, I, it's time out for that, man. It's time out for that. Let's grow up, let's mature, and let's make good choices. Good choices that are going to have good outcomes. Why? Because we've prior planned and we've made the proper, you know, uh, uh, um, we put things in place. We're not moving according to our flesh and according to how we feel all the time and according to how things look all the time. No, we're moving according to what's right. We're moving according to someone else being blessed outside of us just thinking about us. Though, yes, we got to love us and take care of us first, but yet our, our thought process and the goal is to be a blessing. Right? And my choices that I make will either put me in position to be that blessing or put me in position to have to want to be blessed. I don't want to be the, the, the borrower. I want to be what God said I was, that I would be the lender. I'd be the one that's able to be a blessing to others because of being obedient and making good, sound, proper choices with the free will that God has given me. You did? I didn't always do that. I've hurt a lot of people. I've messed up a lot. I've missed out on more than I could even count and tell you about. That's why I can sit here today and tell you just what I'm telling you. God has called us to be good stewards. You know what I'm saying? He's called us to take care of what he's given us. He's given us a body. We ought to take care of it. He's given you grace and, and he's given you love. You ought to grow those things so you can give it away. He's given us intellect and understanding. Let's not, um, let's not take that and, you know, uh, deform it. Let's not take that and abuse it. Let's take everything that he's given us and make wise decisions from the free will that we have to be good stewards of what he's given us. You dig? Use your free will wisely. One love. It's your man, LeVon. I'm out.